This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. For all your favorite characters from the Gillivers, shop the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. Also brought to you by Rode Microphones, the official microphone supplier of Inside the Gillivers. See their entire lineup today at Rode.com. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Season 3, Episode 17 of Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. And I'm trying so hard not to laugh right now, and you can't see why, because I'm talking to myself at the moment. But we have a very special guest tonight. I'd love you to all put your hands together and welcome from Better Call Saul, everyone's favorite film students. We got the band back together. I'm going to bring them on right now. Please welcome Julian, Haley, and Josh. Here they are. We've got them all. Hey, guys, girls. Hey, everybody. How's it going? What's up? It's great. How are you? Fantastic. Fan absolutely fantastic. And I'm sorry for the delay. It took us a little bit to lock everybody in here. Uh, but it is great. It's Friday night. It's Gilliver's time. And we're talking some yeah, things yeah. off the air about the show. But first and foremost, Julian, it's a pleasure to have you back. Josh, it's a pleasure to have you yeah. back as well, too. And Haley, welcome to the program. Thank you. Yay. I'm glad to be here. Who's yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Finally. Finally. <laughs> Finally Thank here. Gosh. I'm Just such a busy schedule. Oh, my God. Is this... <laughs> Wait a second. Are we the first uh, episode after the series is wrapped? Or did you have Bob and Ray after the series? No, wrapped? we had Bob and Ray uh, the Friday before. So, oh my God. You what guys, an honor. guys, let's recognize Whoa. what an honor this is. We are Whoa. the first guests after the series yeah, baby. closed. That's Thank right. You, Eric. MVPs of that last little episode snippet showing us, you know, we, we had those six episodes. Why not? Might as well. Yeah, there was some fans online that were like, this is the last piece of better call Saul content that will, uh, that will air or the last, but whatever they said, some, someone on Twitter said something funny like that. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> and then, but now, so then here we are inside the Gilliverse mm -hmm. and we're the first last get, we're the first guests of the post better call Saul era inside the Gilliverse. You are. You are. The so I guess, out. I guess that's where that's, the beginning of the end. You are yeah. the mycelium. Yep. <laughs> Did you know this is a funny thing? We're moving it along where the fiber content. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> be, because when Vince and Peter were on the week before that, they Vince had talked someone, one of our uh, viewers asked a question about video games. Right. And so mm -hmm. um, they answered that question and a lot of the video game uh, news agencies, like the news scenes, like, you know, IGN and all those game companies went crazy. It kind of helped our channel because a lot of press came to our channel really quick. But somebody didn't like the idea of a Breaking Bad video game. And they not only said that they hated the name of our show, Inside the Gilliver, they actually called it Inside the Gilligan. And I felt, oh. a, little, I felt a little awkward about that. <laughs> it was a little awkward. They called the show Inside the... Actually, I don't know if it was a mistake, but it was. we were called Inside the Gilligan. So I guess we're trying to get inside Vince Gilligan's brain. That's what we're, if we're going to be uh, there at all. But that was a bit of an awkward uh, statement, I'd say. Now, this was a critic yeah. who said this, or was this a troll? No, this was this was a, a, a critic and a writer. Yeah, which are... Yeah, we might as well say... Are going to name names? No. Are going to name names? No. They're going to get yeah. dragged... They're going to get dragged ah. through the mud of the Gilliverse. Put it this way. Well, we'll have to write a song odd, about odd, it. Odd, odd, odd. Yeah, we'll turn, it into, we'll turn it into some some creative energy somewhere. There you go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't really get compl I didn't complain about it too much because, honestly, I think they only had a few more, like, probably had a few more views on their webpage than we do here, so it really didn't hurt too much. I just thought it was funny. But anyways, As someone yeah. who uh, doesn't play video games, I don't know where my opinion would lay why, yeah. on that answer. No. I was thinking that too. I was like, that could be interesting, but I really haven't played enough video games other than like Mario Kart. Right. No, 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 no. Get Rockstar to do it. Get Rockstar. Well, they mentioned that. San Andreas. Yes. Okay, then there you go. Yep. I think but that, that would be a perfect. But that's the thing too. Yeah. We talked to Vince and I, I'm i sure you would all agree. Right, and Dotto. even not having a, a, you know, for the people that don't even have a big video game knowledge, just, and I said this to Vince, just because you have this massive name, 
you know, Breaking Bad, the whole the whole Gilliverse doesn't mean that a game's going to be successful. B- Peter and Vince are perfect examples that it comes down to content and script and story, right? Oh, yeah. You could have the best okay. video game in the world, but if it doesn't have a script or story, it's there's no playability. Like, you know, so yeah. But anyways, there are some great questions coming in right off the hop here. So this is one sent in from from Eamon. He is one of our uh, moderators and friends as well, too. And he says, how does it feel to have one of the only on-color sequences in the show? The reflection of the Better Call Saul commercial and Saul's glasses. So anyone who wants to take that one, feel feel free. You have it, meaning like because we made the we made the commercial. Yeah, because to feel how how does it feel to have one of the only color sequences in the show? The re, the reflection of Better Call Saul commercial in Saul's glasses. This is a commercial for the three of us. Yeah. No, I think it's the yeah. ones that we created. Oh right, 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 yeah. right. right. That. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we filmed. Well, it. well, first of all, I think to answer that question, we need to establish an agreement. I believe the three of us were the crew throughout Breaking Bad. We made those commercials. We didn't yeah. see them Agreed. get made, but we made them. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. You guys agree? Oh, I, yeah, totally. I agree. We made them. We made them. We made them. I mean, who else, I mean, who else would it be referencing? He's not going to find someone else to make those commercials. Oh, uh, no. But we have a so wait, you saw, you, she's talk, you're talking about the episode where Marion um, is like, you know, uh, I searched for a con man, Albuquerque, and there came Saul Goodman, you know, and then she and then the the commercial the plays in, in Gene's glasses. That's what that I guess I'm not understanding the question. Yes. Are they saying that like we made that com- because we made that commercial, we have the color sequence in the black I, and whites? I think so. I think what they're trying. Yeah. Like, how did it feel like to be honored, I guess, in that way? I mean, way. that's a really deep and interesting way to look. I mean, that was a really interesting lens that was looking at that. I mean, I think it's I I think it says something about the happiness in Bob's past, I guess, maybe when things were easier, maybe there was something illustrating that the past was colorful. But I don't know what it means for us as the the I think it what it means uh, for. Well, uh, I think my take is this is from that era that is still in color and then it's a blast from the color era. And so we see it in the glasses and it it means it's there. I don't know. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to interpret it. It's too poetic for me to put into words. But yeah. uh, but I will say it's meant to be abstract. I don't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK to say, too. That's OK I to say, too. <laughs> the question was hard. Uh, <laughs> next question. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on. Well, here, here's a question from one of my friends over in Michigan. Jerry Lycus says, for all three, what was your favorite episode you worked on? And I know that's almost like asking someone with multiple kids, who's your favorite oh, child? Your favorite child? But, yeah. Well, I want to hear your guys' answer. Yeah, well, you know what I'm going to do? Just be, just to be fair here, uh, both uh, Julian, I've got both our guys on left and right sides of the screen here. I'm going to go to Haley because it's her first time here on the show. And the other two, you can think about your f- favorite episodes. But Haley, is there a particular one that you really enjoyed uh, working on? Oh, okay. I mean literally all of them it's hard it is this is like picking my favorite child and i'm giving the like answers all um but no i i would say i love the episode where i we were tricking huel um you know i was trying to save huel and we were all in the like nail salon and filming that and like is it the one where 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 he's pretending to be the pastor at huel's right he's tricking the da yeah. 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 yeah 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 that was so funny It was so much fun. Yeah. And it was fun to like play. I loved getting to play lots of different characters. And so I liked putting on the like Southern accent and then that I had like impressed Jimmy and that he thought I had been (laughs) getting better. I felt like it filled my soul a lot. Um, And then I don't know, I can't like pick one. I think even just the first one that I appeared in where we all jumped out of the car and like ran across to that school. That was just so fun because so fun. Such a great shot. Yeah, the like work of mechanics and working with both of you guys, like and with Bob and just all I don't know, the it was the also of it. it was also like I guess as a trio, I really loved the ones where they started playing out like they started like giving us stuff to do together and, and like mm-hmm. play up on our chemistry, like the stuff where we're stuck in the car and like, you know, mm-hmm. I think you flooded it, you flooded it. I think it's not broken. I think whatever, you know, and it's like yeah. the way and then I also love your character 
Haley, uh, on 501, it, where we're in the courthouse and you're playing the reporter, like, oh and what's God. your name, oh, yeah. sir? Yeah. Yes. They were so funny as that character. That hair, oh, I was hilarious. obsessed with. Oh and there God. was something, too, they didn't they didn't make it in the episode, but there's a, the way you're, like, walking down the hall, like, when <laughs> when when you're, like, like you're, like, kind of, like, unwind, you know, like, whew, that was it. That was, I that am was. a news reporter now. It's yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. That was great. And but yeah, I also remember we had a fun moment on that one where he's pranking, um, pranking the D.A. or the mm-hmm. the lady at the court. Um, and uh, and oh, yeah, I, yeah, I mentioned yeah, this yeah. before where he was making me laugh in real life. Bob was making me laugh. And then I thought, oh, well, I'm laughing for real. I would probably laugh if I were there. So I started working in a laugh and then you start working in an elbow shove. And that yeah. was a fun little moment. Yeah. I thought it was like cool too because it felt like the first time our characters kind of like developed a little bit of like a dynamic, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we we joked about getting the band back together, but you really become this 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 trio. It was like here in Canada, Rush. You know, talk about bands. You know, it's a three Rush of Albuquerque. That's right. Yeah, (laughs) I'll take that. And you all knew, like after a while, like a band knows how to. You know, they know when the guitar player is going to take a solo, and they know it's like you just worked off of each other. And I know obviously there's scripts, but it comes down to the talent that you have as actors as well too. And it was totally believable. Um, I mean, it would be like the kind of people that a lot of people would want to work with like, like these characters, if they're producing a video somewhere or something, you want to go work with this team. <laughs> we will get team. the job done. Yeah, I think sure. so. And something I like about, and I'm sure every, everything's intentional with the writers, but they never explicitly directed us to be this uh-huh. way. But uh, by, from, from the first episodes that with, when it was just Julian and me to when, you know, when Haley was brought in to just to the very end of the series, it started to feel, it really felt like by the end of the series, the final episode, that we were uh, a, a well oiled unit, still sloppy and amateur, but well oiled. And like, and like yeah. we knew our characters were so familiar with Jimmy that we had a familiarity. Whereas, like early on, you know, there was like a, oh, we don't really know this guy, but he's asking us to do this thing. And then I really liked the yeah. feeling, the idea that like, these characters are do this so often for this guy Mm -hmm. um, that they're just, I don't know by the last episode. It's like, yeah, we know you. Yeah. Okay. Here we are. We're ready to do it. You know? Um, Yeah. There was such a rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think was like showcased in the way, even that they shot it. That angle. Yeah. Yeah. It just looked like we were well oiled. Yeah. I mean, that segues right into, to why, what my favorite, you know, episode was, was this last one really because it was that it was the culmination mm-hmm. of all of us kind of well oiled and again there was no directing i don't feel like there was a, really tom just kind of was like go you know we're going to do this basically this is how we're going to do it you guys are going to show up and this is how it's going to go but the technicality of it just you know with the steady cam and then having the camera on the dolly doing that you know 360 shot around us and seamlessly tying it all together and how well we all kind of coordinated together and got that basically streamlined until we had a really nice shot yeah and then the follow-through which was interesting because this i had no idea i had no idea what they were going to do with those photos i really That's had so no funny I, yeah. they so took funny. you guys away from me you guys <laughs> we were just walking together at one point and the next thing i know you guys were gone and i i just i, I thought you guys were going back to base camp i think you guys were off and then they pulled me off to the side. I, it was so seamless. I don't even remember. And then they were like, oh, we're going to do some photos and do, you know, just some fun. You know, we'll see what we're going to do with them. You know, and I'm like, oh, OK, I had no idea. And then I came back not knowing that we were doing anything with those things. And then a year later, they, they used that. So when you that. saw Howard get the the the, dumb, the, the pictures with you, mm-hmm. were, did you think that was coming or were you did you think oh, I bet it's going to be me? Or were you surprised yourself? I literally, it was two seconds before they opened up those, those pictures for the second time. I, I, I completely oh. left my mind. I had no idea. I forgot you forgot you'd even taken you them. You forgot that the I picture forgot. even existed. I thought, they did, I thought they just threw them away. I don't know what, they, I, I guess the scene was done. So I was like, oh, I guess. They're not or maybe they're like or... behind the scenes pictures or something. Exactly. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I, right as he's like, go get the next, pi- go get the pictures. That's when I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. And that's when it all started unveiling. And then that showed the, th- that moment was really when I got a good sense of how brilliant 
Tom was. It was it was also just so such a funny way to make use of what's funny about your character. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Lips are sealed. <laughs> Agreed. That's yeah. the thing too. Like, uh, do you think after the fact? I also Buster, love. Sorry to sorry to cut you off, Eric. No. I also love how, you know, sound guy has the foliage you know but it's like he's holding it up like there's no use there's no use for a boom mic in a photograph but his skill is to hold the pole up so they're giving him that oh like here i am yeah i think that's so funny my favorite oh sorry go ahead yeah just i think it's so funny they're like well you know uh we'll have we'll have sound guy hold the pole (laughs) with the stick he's gonna nail it his arms are ready And then yeah. you pulled off that that awesome line. It, I think it was totally improvised. You're like aces on the fully odd. No, that was scripted. Was, was it? it? Yeah. Oh man. Okay. You made Tom don't mess really with natural. no improv. Tom, no, no. Tom, we don't mess with no, Tom's dialogue. Like, yeah, I, perfect, yeah. A couple times in the past, maybe we we've thrown a couple lines in there, and he's like, okay. But yeah, this one like, was mm-hmm. so tight and pro- mm-hmm. I mean, look, we were in an Emmy nominated episode yes. for writing. So don't <laughs> f with Tom's. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. 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 I didn't I'm mean saying to that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, I'm saying it's you. half of us. We world. don't mess with it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I mean, he created us. I can't. I mean, he's our God. I will. I don't know. Did Tom come up with the three of us or he I think he commandeered us. Yeah, yeah I, think he, I think yeah, he, he brought I think yeah. he took us under his wing for sure. Yeah. 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 I think it was it pretty much all of us. It became became Tom kind mm-hmm. of writing the set pieces with us. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. He's, I'm, I'm I'm really yeah. He's a genius. Yeah. I love him dearly, and we'll he's get him back genius. here soon on the show. He's got some family commitments on Fridays right now, so that's one reason why he's not here. We might even move a few shows to Thursday just to accommodate. But yeah, I miss him. I miss him dearly. Oh my god, he's literally the best and just the kindest heart and soul. I love like interacting with him, just humanly. Even yeah. he's great. Yeah. Awesome. He's a teddy bear. We're getting more great questions coming in by the second. This is great. Thank you, Karina, for sending these I in. Got there were more questions. They're so fun to just yeah. expound yeah. on this on this <laughs> single one. Exactly. Okay. For hours. And we have, yeah. I do have my chat open, but as well too, but I don't get a chance to predict, like to really focus on because I make sure nothing goes wrong here. So thank God for Karina here. This is from Jen Stevens, one of our other moderators and friends here. She says, was it easier? Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm going to come to Jen's uh, next. There's a Jennifer Lord above her. What did you guys think of the series last episode? So we talked about this off air and not everyone Should has seen it. that one since Julian hasn't seen it yet? Um. Okay. You know what? Maybe we I should. I loved it. Okay. I loved it. Okay, so there you go. So Julian's the only one who hasn't seen it yet, and he had you had some family commitments too. Is that correct? I had family commitments, and my mom hasn't seen the last season, so I was thinking that she had seen it, but she hasn't. She hasn't been able to get the access to because she's down in Panama, of course. So she yeah. doesn't have access to it. Okay. So this whole time we've been like, okay, well, let's just try to get her up to date, and we haven't got up to this. T- yeah, I was trying to get up to it to this point, but I, I, I would just say up. I thought it was eloquently written by Peter and really. I don't know. He tied a nice bow, even though, like Josh was saying, it is ambiguous at the end as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so Pieces I, are I, ambiguous. They give us some. They give us. They mm-hmm. give us some. This is all very vague without getting specific. They give us some really specific answers to like, here's what's going to happen, and then there's a lot of ambiguity about the last, you know, mm-hmm. shot, and or you know what happens after that, you know, and it's like you can look at it. It's all kind of based off. Well, what do you think? You know, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, And uh, Mm. uh, I thought it was beautiful and it was thrilling and it was tragic and it was funny at times. Spoiler Mm. alert, uh, Peter DeSeth has an appearance in it and he's great. Incredible. Bill Oakley, he is so good in it. I love that he's in that episode and he just, his comic timing is so uh, sharp and he's just, I love that they that Bill Oakley has like such a a big part in that a episode. Present. Yeah, yes. I well, agree. Like William Oakley now, William Oakley. Yes, William Oakley. Yeah, William <laughs> and it is funny also to think about because Bill Oakley's character in the pilot, you know, um, yeah, there's some interesting, you know, kind of parallel or mirrors to the pilot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you guys and all mirrors to the to mirrors to the Breaking Bad finale. Breaking Bad TV. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. Like it's cool. like not, it's not, it's not exactly, it's obviously not pl- you know, plot wise, or it's not like, you know, it's not ex- it's not the same, but it's like you could one could argue, you know, Jimmy, this is yeah, Julian took the earphones off. Jimmy yeah. does, Jimmy does for Kim what walter does for jesse in a way you know mm-hmm. he make they, they make they both make sacrifices 
for their love. In mm-hmm. this- for their love to be able to like kind of go on. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Well, you guys all know that Bob is known sometimes for giving spoilers. People will ask Bob a question. It's okay. You can put your headphones back on. Brilliant. Yeah, well, it's good. Yeah, you're good. Guys, thank you. <laughs> now we're not we're not giving you any spoilers. But what I was gonna, what I was saying, Julian, is um, Bob sometimes is known for. Now he doesn't mean to do this, but he gives away spoilers. People will ask a question, and he'll he'll give a spoiler. And last week when I had Bob and Ray on there, um, it, it's all going to fire Bob for giving a spoiler. No. no. And yeah, it's, no. it's all Goodman they're on Twitter. They're not going to fire anyone. They're the best. But they, yeah, you know, they I'm sure they would say, oh, we're sick on, of this, guys. Bob. Yeah. Come on, guys. You guys all know it's all Goodman on Twitter. He asked a question and asked about, you know, doing these final scenes and stuff like that. And Bob had said something and I won't say what it is. And, and I, I got torn a new, new ass. Like basically the comments, like there wasn't a ton, but some of the people were like, Oh, spoiler alert. And they even put like a timestamp, whatever. And now people are going back after watching the finale. They're saying that wasn't really a spoiler. Cause you know, like as Josh is saying, it's very ambiguous. Um, yes. so it really wasn't a spoiler, you know, but it was good. I just want to say that it was good. So Julian, I can't, when do you think you're going to watch it? I can get tomorrow? it done by tonight. tomorrow. That'd be great. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, my mom, my mom and my partner are watching right now. Oh, good. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you we're going to watch this. Okay. We're going to make it happen guys. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're going to, it's gonna out there. It it's it. available. It's, it's too, it's for us. We can do this. You just put yeah. pressure on them, put pressure on them. We'll, there we'll you go. go. On Twitter, you know, yeah, on little we'll Josh will make a really strong, a strong tweet. I there you go. Josh puts out some strong tweets. So you think my tweets are good about it? Oh, oh yeah. I try, oh, I try yeah. to give a thoughtful, strong tweet. They yeah. are They're thoughtfully great. strong. They're brilliant. And then I look at them and I heart it and I think, wow, you really nailed it. I just yeah. love Josh so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know how hard it is to trying to be secretive about stuff like that too. Cause my girlfriend, she's back way back in season five and I was drinking from Jen's, uh, Davis and Maine uh, water bottle one time with apple juice and you know, pee and, and, uh, she's, she doesn't understand what that is yet. So I'm like, I can't even tell her about that. So that's how far back she is. So she's got a season and a half to go. Oh, but anyways, yeah, speaking mm-hmm. of Jen, uh, Jen Stevens, she's the one who made that water bottle. Was it easier to work with Saul <laughs> or Kim making the commercials? They seem kind of demanding. And I'll let anyone <laughs> who ever wants to take that. Actually, no, Haley, how about you? Okay. Um, they seem kind of demanding. I I feel like we developed such a rapport for with Jimmy. Now, are you answering for Haley or are you answering for makeup drama girl? Oh, yeah, for drama girl. Oh, good. What's drama girl's answer? I feel like that was a question. For the students, not the actors. The no, agreed, agreed, 100%. Sure. Like, this will be okay. up for all so of all I the actors. For Drama Girl, um, I think Ray, uh, just because in the sense that when she came on, she really like put us to task. She held us to things a little bit more where uh, Jimmy kind of let us uh, play. We were a little ragtag. We were, um, it felt like the rules were looser in when he was around. And then with Ray, like we... She like got Jimmy whipped into shape, which then whipped us into shape. I don't know. And gave me slight anxiety. I would feel like she also knew how to do makeup really well. So it was like, whoa, she was intimidating. Right, right. Ray, uh, 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 Kim knew you saying Kim knew how to do makeup better than drama girl did. I think so. I mean, the drama girl was a little intimidated. Drama girl was like, yeah, I was, I was like very intimidated. She came in that perfect ponytail and just like, a lovely pantsuit and it was intimidating to see where Jimmy kind of looked like his clothes maybe didn't always fit right and stuff so less to, less to like worry about you know now how about how about though when like because Jimmy's always about locations location 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 yeah. and maybe Kim might not be so demanding that way maybe could could Kim be easier to work with in some cases maybe oh yeah oh. yeah go for it go ahead start Oh no, you go, Julie. I think that Kim, well, <laughs> I think, well, I'll say for camera guy, I'm going to guess that he didn't give a shit either way. And he, um, you know, Kim shows up and he's probably a little like, who's this lady, you know, who thinks she knows more than I know. I'm already having to deal with this, with this Jimmy guy who thinks he knows more. So, but I'm getting paid either way. But then there is a scene in the, in, uh, in 607, there's a part in 607 where, He's given uh, Kim some lip and she yanks his tape off and she, he's like, hey, what the crap, you know, or whatever. So I think Kim doesn't suffer the foolishness of camera guy or yeah. the in, or any kind of possible amateurishness or ineptitude of the other film students. You know, Kim yeah. and that whereas Jimmy might actually 
yeah, he enjoys making these things. He likes feeling like a director. He mm-hmm. kind of likes bossing him around, but he kind of likes being the leader and the and working with him a little bit. I think. Yeah, I think that's well said. I had a, I had, I you know I had always a, a weird complex with with Saul. You know, I always thought, you know, with sound guy, he he always looked at him like a like a father figure, but like an he had an abusive father, and uh, so he he like was <laughs> super. <laughs> He was very like fawny over Bob and like over Saul's character, Jimmy. He, he always was like fawning over Jimmy and making sure that he was always happy or something like that. And then Kim felt like he kind of had a thing for her. Okay. Oh. Just a little bit. Like, see, he was because uh, sound, we, I think it's, it's often been alluded sound guy has a thing for drama girl or they have a thing together. Yes. Yeah. And so that's an interesting reveal that sound guy actually has a thing for Kim. Wow. Well, when Kim shows up, sound guys like, oh man, I like oh, drama girl, but oh. Kim Wexler. Which is obviously why I'm intimidated by Kim. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And like, I'm, I just, I have to step up the game and the attire, everything. Yeah. That reminds yeah, me of a whole... funny early line with uh, uh, one of the earlier episodes that have Julie and I where He's like saying, I need a dolly this time or whatever. And I'm like, what kind? He's like, I say, Western hustler, peewee. And uh, and he goes, hey, watch your language. There's a lady present. Yeah, because uh, Kim's there. I mm-hmm. Funny that. Mm-hmm. that that was I see. I always regretted that scene because I always I, I looked back at that scene, always smacking myself over the head going, why, man? Because I could have I, I, I wanted that moment. There was this little moment where I just thought like I'd, I'd walk by Kim and go like, hey, <laughs> really awkward you don't even never know that they would have i think you did it. do it you don't know that yeah. they would have used it you don't and even they know they would have never used it they probably wouldn't have used it you but you know, know. It was, yeah i just put it i wish i i had you know make made the risk you know what, you've given them the option you wish you'd yeah. given them the op- hey them you know what option. you may misremember because i was there and you did and you oh. did give them that option. i'm giving i'm you know positively ga- i'm positive gaslighting you you did do it <laughs> positive gaslighting. now that you say times. that josh i totally remember it yeah, i did you yeah. did do I it remember it. I, remember I wasn't I even that. on the show but i like felt it like josh kind of told me like sound guy did this really cool like yeah. thing. we're able a, to it was do a fun thing. everyone on the set loved it and they couldn't use it for time yeah, yeah. it was yeah. Kinda, yeah. it was it was the final thing in the yeah, episode i couldn't keep it in for like two minutes it happens uh, but also you know what if you go back and rewatch that scene with what you said in mind i bet you the viewers are going to project that sound guy in his in his quietness is thinking oh my gosh this kim woman she <laughs> yeah. something about her you may not like overtly <laughs> go hey seat. baby or gawk at her you know i love to watch you walk away but uh you you are it's there it's all yeah, there honestly honestly yeah, Jordan, yeah, yeah. it's better that you did it like the nod didn't make the cut you know because then you got to fester in all these feelings unbeknownst to anybody had you showcased it like right away yeah. we it wouldn't have been able to too go much yeah, there'd yeah. be nowhere to go there'd be nowhere, There's to, nowhere go. to go it's you know? little little pockets it's just gonna be like my cards too soon mm-hmm. yeah exactly. yep revealing the and hands that, the the love triangle between uh kim and jimmy and sound guy would have apex by what season three and then they, and then we wouldn't wind up with how great of a finale we had so exactly. i think it's important exactly. that they withheld on that plot acceleration yeah. you know what thanks for rationalizing this for me guys That's, Always. that made all the you. sense now i feel okay. validated in every way you know how I'm okay. feeling validated. I feel like we're offering something different to the uh, the world here tonight. Um, you remember uh, some 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 <laughs> I of you. What happens yeah. when you get the three of us together? Some of you guys yeah. are too young. I think you're all too young to remember this. But you remember maybe you do. Back in kids, uh, back in like days of my childhood, there's these cartoons that you know conjunction junction. What's your function? And working on the railway and all this stuff. They're teaching all these words and it's ABC uh, more Saturday morning cartoons and stuff. It was educational stuff. And now I'm finding inside the Gilverse is becoming educational because off the air we're talking about these big words like perpetuity. Is that the right perpetuity, word? Perpetuity. That's per- what perpetuity, I used earlier. Peter Dyseth, you know, uh, <laughs> William Oakley. And then now with Josh, positive gaslighting. So two things, two things. I just made that term up. I, I love it. Uh, hashtag it, coin it, uh, get trademark it. Get positive <laughs> gaslighting. I've never heard of that. Positive gaslighting. Camera guy said it first. Yeah, Camera or positive gas. That's when you go to Taco Bell. You know, you definitely. Positive gas. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, jumping over some more questions. This is from Andrea from over in Germany. She says, would the three of you be free for a sequel with Kim and Jimmy slash Saul? Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Is it is it canon? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, or, or are we making, you know, I don't know. It, there's a lot of complication to that question. You know? I know, because, I mean, Vince has made it, it has very to clear. Make sense. Yeah. It yeah, has to yeah make it's got to be canon. It's got to be canon. Yeah. Yeah. If it works, then totally. If we're when just they make like, that Saul, when they make that Better Call Saul equivalent of El Camino and heavily feature us in there, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be, be there. we'll be honored. Yeah, oh, there yeah. you go. Do you I think would. that we? Do you? Th I think a lot of people have been asking. Do you think that we got implicated in all, all the years later um, legally in as uh, being complicit in Howard's death? Ooh. That's a good question because technically, yes. Technically, yes. yes. We are. Yeah, we were complicit. Yes. And, oh, we, and and oh, and do you we, think we, they we, went to track us down for participating in you know that and put us put us in jail? They kind of did put that little Easter egg in that little bit right there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. They kind of they they put that in the last the last episode, the penultimate episode mm -hmm. when Kim talked about it and told Howard's wife. So now, I mean, that's all open in the air. That's I bet we're in Kim's statement, and then. Uh, Jimmy, oh, for worked, sure. <laughs> Jimmy worked with three great, talented film students. Who, Wonderful. Yeah. One's a Gelfling. It was so sad that their careers are now also squandered because, yeah. They were up and oh, coming. Man. Yeah. Because you, if what you look at it this way, like. Documentary about it. Yeah. If, if there's someone that, um, you know, commits suicide or, you know, because of cyber bullying and things like that, this isn't the same type of a thing, but images were used to eventually, you know, lead to where it did, there could be some legal ramifications for that. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Know we oh, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I so, know. Pretty icky. It I'm really, like, uh... really spans the whole thing about how Jimmy is so toxic to everyone around him. Like what Chuck says, he goes, you, you hurt everyone around you. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Including the film students. Mm -hmm. So if oh they did God, get implicated, yeah, would they be would the three would the three uh, the film students be calling Will Oakley or would, William Oakley? Would we be would we be in director's jail? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would be in the cage. There you yeah. go. <laughs> All right, you know what we're going to do here? We're going to jump over to some audio questions. We just have a few of them tonight, so we'll get through these ones, and then we'll jump back to some uh, more text questions coming in through the chats here as well, too. So the first one, like always, uh, we always give preference to our executive producer, Karina. This is probably to the three of you. Let's have a listen to see Hi, what Karina. she says. Hey, Karina. Hi, Julian. Hi, Josh. Hi, Haley. This is Karina. Hi. My question is for all three of you. Did any of you break or crack up during the many hilarious scenes that you did on the show? Yes. Constantly. <laughs> Literally all the time, especially when we were adding tidbits or um, or when John Ennis came. Like also that he just was comedy gold as well. And it was so fun oh, to play yeah. and riff off of him when I was doing his makeup. Oh, yeah, John Ennis. All three of you, you, Josh and and John, all three of you, when you guys just went off on a tangent there and comedy tangent we were just sitting there cracking our asses off mm -hmm. or the time that, you, you know you, you know josh you and bob when you guys were just going off going like we can't do it it's not possible what was no, this no, oh no, oh in the like, episode like yeah. you can't do yeah. you can't Is that, what if we no dead what we, no dead dead, dead, dead. it's not possible <laughs> dead dead no. it just they went on for like a minute and a half <laughs> yes did. Oh. did Michael Morris direct that episode? Was that Michael Morris or was that Tom? Tom wrote it, I think, and Michael Morris was Michael the director. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because because the same episode was the one with the montage. Yeah, I was just gonna say when all those yeah. people were there and we were filming that commercial at the um, nail salon, that was amazing too. Just watching yeah. all these individuals come in, and then Bob just was like improving the whole thing, and it was so funny. Oh, yeah, and that was pizza. a lot of fun. That, that was so I mean, fun. I mentioned that uh, Haley mentioned the episode where he's pretending to be Huel's pastor, mm -hmm. and that I, I remember being particularly funny. <laughs> um, I remember the episode was it, I think it was our second episode, the one where uh, 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 Alpine Shepherd Boy, I think is the name of it, and and uh, Haley, we didn't have Haley with us yet, uh, but I remember doing there's a, a exchange of dialogue. He's like, You got a dolly, you know, nope, no dolly, you know, well, uh. Got to ask, dude, Dolly's extra or whatever. When I was doing my, when they were doing my coverage, I just remember Bob was like, I don't, I don't know if you remember it all, Julian. He was just oh, yeah. trying to make me laugh. He was, he was shuffling stuff around. He was just saying it weird. And it was so right. funny. He was trying to really break you and you couldn't break you. And you were just yeah. sitting there just going, no. That, it was, it was, he broke it me up short. Hilarious. 
Then there was another one. I think in the office, he started banging on the 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 uh, the filing cabinet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that was really funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. It. I mean, when you have Bob kind of just go off on when he's really feeling good and he's really in that, you know, he's got that pump uh-huh. on. He's zoned. He he really does make the the whole energy of that scene turn into pure comedy. Magic. And it, yeah, it's magic. The crew would always be. I'm I'm going to relay a compliment that we got. The crew would always tell us that when we showed up, it was everyone that it was fun because the scenes were so fun and funny, and right. they were comic relief scenes. And a lot of the stuff they shot. I mean. We were never there, so we didn't really see what what I'm happening. sure it was always a blast is my take. But but we never saw like it being tough. So mm-hmm. we just thought every time we went there, it was a it was a blast. And we were having yeah. fun and making jokes and, you know, laughing. And yeah. So and and also something that was great is the way that um, oftentimes would happen. I'd say the past few episodes, the last few episodes we did over the last couple of years, we'd have a set piece if. And or we'd have just a scene with like we would just say it, we'd say it out loud and then we'd start saying it again. And then blocking would just kind of happen, um, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, like it would all yeah. just kind of come together organically. And most of the directors would just sort of stand back and observe that. And it would all just I remember after the pandemic, it, it was a little like, how do we do this again? That's how I felt. And uh-huh. then it again, it just all kind of happened and came together, you know, yeah. like or after the lockdown year, because it was yeah, like over like, a year and a half. Cool. Off. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know. It just felt like everyone kind of did their thing and it all kind of would come together and there'd be minimal, you know, there, there'd be some placing and stuff like that. But yeah, it was always it very was organic that. feeling. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And like you say, too, brought some comic relief to an oftentimes depressing, dark you know, um, a show it can be right, so that's it's great. Yeah. Can jump over to another audio question. You guys know Ragava. He's made his fame on Talking Saul there about two weeks back. I think it was. Yes, yeah. I was so happy for him. I know. He he, so what a great. talent! What a talent, eh? Oh, um, he has a question. I believe for the three of you. I processed these earlier today, and I I honestly forget what he had asked. So I believe it's for the three of you. Hi, Josh. Hi, Julian. Hi Haley, it's Raghava. It's so awesome to have you back on Inside the Gilliverse. And Haley, welcome to the channel since you're here for the first time. Here's my question for you all. Every single character in the show has had a great backstory and we've seen them unravel throughout the show. What do you think the backstories of your characters are? Great question. We'll start we'll start with Julian. Wow. That's a good one. We'll go to Julian. Great question. Well, okay. you talked about I mean possibly an abusive father or something, right? Yeah. He's- yeah. I you know, I felt like his character had a lot of, you know, abuse growing up. I, I always thought that, you know, he he put on that happy face. He always was really kind and sweet. And, you know, we have that contrast between, you know, camera guy and, and sound guy. And then when Haley's character, when Drama Girl came out, there was like this this now both positive world uh, next to to contrast with Josh's, you know, just apathy. And um it really just balanced itself. But I, I always thought, well, you know, yeah, we always think people have a, you know, uh, not much going on or you, you don't know what's going on behind someone's real positive face, their, their happiness. And I always thought that there was also, there was always this fawning sadness to sound guy a little bit where he always wanted to be approved. He always wanted to get that approval. He always wanted to, that he was doing a good job. And um, eventually, I think throughout his life, he figures that out and, you know, has moments where he gets caught into the fawning. But that's that's his weakness. I think that was that would be his flaw in his character, because I think every character in whether it was El Camino or, or Breaking Bad or Critical Assault, they all have flaws. I think that was what's brilliant about every one of the characters. They all have these real flaws and mm-hmm. they give them a humanity that gives a whole story. To, to, to unfold, you know, especially when they interact in that way. So I always thought his flaw was that he just tried so hard to, to, to be good for someone and never really got it. And, um, it was always, do you think that, that, uh, do you think that he, if, if, if a uh, camera guy was, you know, how camera guy is, that was, it, it was so bad for sound guy that camera guy was a reprieve, you know, like, 
like, geez, this guy tolerates camera guy because he's had to deal with way worse. (laughs) Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, or at least like more so that sound guy understands camera guy in a way that most people don't. Okay. Like he knows knows sound guy where, you know, his, his brash really snarky comments could come off as camera guys to people, camera guys. Yeah. Camera guys, you know, his comments could come off as so brash and hard and, and just offensive and people could take offense to it. And my character would be like, eh, you just don't know him. You don't know him. Yeah, I think they like each other because, you know, uh, because that episode, that early episode where, you know, he's going, Ricola, you know, we're having a laugh. We're having a laugh together, you know? No, I think you guys always got each other, which was like the beauty of it. You, Yin and Yang. Yeah, for Mm -hmm, sure. mm -hmm. Kind of putting the fun and dysfunctional, all three of you together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's why you think a drama girl's backstory is. Good question. Um, Okay, I feel like she was raised in a really small town with a dad. Religious? Religious? Very religious, yes. Yeah. However, she felt like she definitely didn't fit in. And because she had a dad who was raising her, had this, like, dreamland infatuation. So would always be wanting to, like, work on makeup or create stories or, like, get mm. her little friends in the neighborhood to kind of help her out. Um And definitely was someone who like in kindergarten when they were like, you have to wear dresses to school was like leading rampages of like, no, like trying to, you know, feminist power for sure. Mm -hmm. And then um, I feel like then when she moved to New Mexico and started to go to college, it like expanded her brain. And um, then she was able to actually like bring her dreams into fruition, but equally because she had such a like religious upbringing and was raised by a dad she definitely wanted to get like Saul's approval all the time and was like nervous too because there's if you do something wrong you can get in a lot of trouble so equally needing to make sure that everything was done perfectly while never asking questions even if you don't know what you're doing totally oh right and which is which is why they probably maybe if they got any sense of some sketchiness from Jimmy turned a blind eye like well i guess this is just the job and this is yeah. man wouldn't be doing something bad this man would no. be doing he likes us he's hiring us i look up to this man yeah Whereas he's a great I, guy yeah. which i Whereas, think is what i wanted to give my money to him and everything yeah i was just gonna to- a, like soft spot in my heart and i felt genuinely bad for him because i could look back and see how hard he was working just to make this commercial come through. And these poor guys were like taking advantage and not believing him. And he always like paid us and, you know, took a chance on us. So then I felt, I don't know, he deserved it. Like, oh, this poor soul who's trying so hard. That was one of my favorite scenes. You talked earlier about favorite scenes of being a musician. I love that scene in the music store, but that's one of my favorite scenes of yours, Haley. Um, Cause oh. I, I think you were the first person that offered the money. Uh, your drama girl's the first person that um, offered the money back. Right. Yeah. And that was like, yeah. Oh, you just felt so bad. And you know, as much as he could have, he saw Jimmy needed that money, you know, he didn't take it or did he take so it? He, I, I forget. So, now. No, he did not. He didn't, yeah. he didn't take it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is so beautifully played and you know, the whole thing of like, uh, uh, he, you know, he goes, oh, you earned it, you weren't, or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah, mm-hmm, the way mm-hmm. you know, the way you're like, but you're losing money. Yeah, you know? I know. Um, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's really it's like the like moment. Hold on my heart. Oh no, you're good. You're good. You're good, Julian. Oh, you did. Yeah, that it's like this hold. Like you were gonna. I think it's hold on your heart. Like it's almost like yeah. this. Like this moment where it's you know he he almost has a moment of humanity, and you mm-hmm. bring that out in him. Like your character, like just because of who your character has always been is this wholesome, really, really, wholesome. really purifier, a purifier of, mm-hmm. of, of all of us. And, and in that he had that moment, I feel like it, there was that moment where, where if he doesn't on, have those moments later. In the I look at that and I think of camera mm-hmm. guy and I think, huh, I think I'm not, I forget exactly how I played it. I think kind of all like played it maybe a little like, oh, I'm sure camera guy kind of feels bad, but he's not going to do anything. And looking back, I'm like, okay, yeah, camera guy is probably like terrible at communication. Yeah. So he's not going, he might feel bad, but he has no idea where the words would be to express like a sorry guy or whatever. So yeah. he's just like, uh, uh, well, I guess we better go, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's camera guy's general thing. Camera guy does not um, have this. It's not 
threatened surprise care about Jimmy. It, he's probably got a little bit of entitlement, even to the first episode with mm-hmm. the film with with camera guy. It's like, you know, dude, you said this would only take a few things. Oh, side note, um, someone highlighted to me that I never, Josh, used the word dude. And I thought, you know what? You're right. That was a challenge for me so to have to say never dude. dude. <laughs> I have to play a character who says dude. So you never said it. You never really say it. Not not in the past 20 years, I don't think. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> good for you. And you exclusive, not exclusively, but you do say it a lot in the show. They worked a lot of yeah. dudes in there for camera. Yeah. Dude, dude the dude. Dude the dude. <laughs> I remember dude. when we shot that one, uh, Julian, I remember when we shot the billboard scene and like, I, you know, because we did so many takes where the guy's hanging off and I go, dude. Dude, the dude, <laughs> and and every time they'd cut, and they're like, "All right, we're gonna do it again. We got more dude, the dude coming up." Or they'd say, "All right, yeah. we're we're gonna go do the, we're gonna do do the dude. We're gonna do yeah. dude the dude, dude again." Yeah. They just kept saying dude, "Dude, the dude." dude. Everyone was saying "Dude, the dude." That yeah, day. Dude. You know what I want to <laughs> see right now? I want to see one of our astute viewers at home go through and make a collage of all the dudes <laughs> and tag all of us on Twitter. And I want to see that. I'd love to see it. There's some great dude, great dude, editors challenge. out there. Dude. We've got one more. Dude, dude. We've got one more audio question. This one is from uh, Nathaniel. Let's see what Nathaniel has to say. We'll jump back to a few more uh, text questions. We'll call it a wrap. Greetings, Eric and fellow Gilliverse fans. This is Nathaniel P. Rentro, last name backwards, aka JBJ Blaze, a fellow Ontarian. My question is for Josh, Haley, and Julian. Would any member of your film crew have put Saul Goodman as a reference or past job on your resume? And if so, how do you think potential new employers would have considered such work experience? Thank you for taking my question. Julian, let's go to you. That's a, that's a great okay. question. Okay. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't, um, not after. Definitely not after. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think during perhaps maybe there might have been like some times where I was like, you yeah, know, I'll put him on. Oh, yeah, no, he he's a good reference. It, but, you know, it was always some sketchy way of trying to get a hold of him. And there was no way to really kind of get a direct line to this guy. So it was always sketchy and never got me the job. That's what I would say. <laughs> Perfect. And how about you, Josh? Uh, probably. I think he probably did. I think he probably put the commercials on his reel camera guy's real he probably Mm -hmm. also if he made a resume listed himself as director that's what i think (laughs) um whereas i think jimmy would probably think he was the jimmy was the director i think they probably i think even though camera guy was shooting it camera guy liked to think he would because he was editing them as well like there was a thing that made it clear camera guy because there's this there's this episode he goes let's get you in the editing room and da 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 Mm -hmm. um and i'm sure he doesn't care and you know uh reels are real yeah oh and i feel like makeup girl i 100 percent would i was very proud of all of the work that we had done all the transformation um and equally oblivious i think sometimes to the schemes that were transpiring so having just no understanding as to where this was going other than like i have a job actually i think camera guy sorry to jump in camera guy probably later on would not, you know, he, as he got more reels, as he got more footage going, he, he would distance himself from the commercial. But in the early days, in the early right. days. Early days, it was all over his reel. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, when we're teaching, you know, there's like, you don't want to be, don't screw this up. The green screen, don't you want to be making some horrible lawyer ad? Yeah. You, know, you had that, that same kind of, like, you don't want to be in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're high You'll brown be stuck now. doing that. That's right. Uh, and yeah. Julian, you brought up a good point as well, too. Green screen. We were talking about this off the air and we've been a little bit toying with some ideas. I won't take much time talking about this, but I um, I'm playing in a new band now and um, I've got a new we've got a new song out and called Burn. And I shared it with you guys uh, via email and Julian sent it to you as well, too. And it was very, the video concept is very Vince Gilligan inspired, totally Vince Gilligan inspired. I mean, I'll never be able to write anything like what Vince Gilligan does, but it's inspired by him. And I had, we have a script all written out. It's all ready to go. We've uh, secured our producer and director, but had this crazy notion to have the film crew obviously not be with us because we just can't logistically do that. We're in different parts of the world, but I'd love to have the three of you make it look like you're producing the video. And we're going to have to toy... You guys game for that? 
totally. I am always down. I don't know what you mean, but I'll try my best to play along. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you some details. I think I think That's I think Haley guy. and Julian have had a chance to listen to the song. Oh, I I, I saw the the email when it was too late. No like problem. Right before we jumped. Well, on. you had another podcast before this too, so I understand totally. But it's we'll, a double podcast day. Yeah, we'll really? touch base podcast on that. Day. But I could see, you know, green screen as Julie and I were talking about off the air, and you know, Haley can drummer girl can be doing some makeup, but one of the guys in the band, and obviously it's someone else. But you know, behind, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Oh, be, movie magic! I believe in it for sure. That'd be fantastic. And Teresa Martinez over in the chat is saying that she's going to see Julian tomorrow at Breaking Bad store. Our friends Ed and Mark over there. Hello. That's great. Isn't uh, Peter Dyseth there tomorrow and uh, a yep. couple, couple others as well, too? And Harrison. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, the whole, yeah. yeah. Great. And, uh, say that one more time. He said great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, they want to get a point where they get us uh, us three at some point. So we're going to have to put pressure on Mark and Ed to, to see what we can do to to get all three of us out there to do something. That would be great. I'd love to see yeah. you guys do we'll that. together. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Circling yeah, backwards anyway, here. Yes, please come out. Anybody yeah. that's watching this, please come out. We'll be at the Breaking Bad store. It'll be amazing. There'll be all the, 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 just, you know, anything with Mark and Ed is going to be beautiful. So just come on over. Fantastic. We'll we have a, a super chat for Radio Chaos says Drama Girl Rocks. Aww. Uh, and yeah. let me see here. Last couple questions here of the evening. Um, Renata Rodriguez says, question for my fellow makeup girl, Haley. Did you ever get method and take classes in makeup artistry to prepare? I did because at the very beginning, I mean, in full transparency, I, Haley, am not like used to putting on makeup let alone putting it on like other people. Um, and so then I, I did have to get method, especially once they started bringing in the like reporter look and the Southern look, I was like, I should know what I'm doing. One of the directors, he was like, I love the choice where it looks like you're, um, you don't know what you're doing and you just keep going all around. I was like, well, I really don't know what I'm doing. So I do <laughs> just keep wanting to make sure everything is going really well. <laughs> Well, here's that. here's another good question as well, too. Uh, this can apply to all three of you. This is from uh, Marion Art says, what would you say you have in common with your characters? Let's start with Josh on this one. Josh, we'll go, we'll go with Josh and we'll go Haley and then Julian. Anything in common? Well, I mean, I like movies. I love movies. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, and I suppose the actory, Question the actory answer that I probably have heard other actors say that I can pair it is, you know, you got to find something about yourself that you can apply to a character. Um, so I must have pulled something that existed in me at some point out to be that guy, but I don't think I'm like that guy. I, I certainly, but then also at the same time, it's fun to um, what's fun about playing the guy sometimes is like, this is so not the way I would do it. So what's it feel like to do it this way? You know, this is so not how I would talk to someone. Um, but, you know, I, I worked at a video store in, in 2003 to 2013. And at the beginning of that was the video store era was not dead. And there were some clerks who were kind of rude to some customers. And I may have been rude. I'll confess to one or two people, yeah. but they were really being difficult. So, um, uh, am I like the character? Not really, but but maybe a little bit. I could I could see you being. Yes, we got Empire Strikes Back. It's over there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in the Theo Angiopoulos section. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's in the Fellini section. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's Fellini, obviously. <laughs> No, that's a Hodorowski film, not a Fellini yeah. film. Come on, <laughs> come on. Haley, how about you? Anything in, in common? Oh, yeah. There were, um, I guess I would say parts of my wardrobe and stuff were that I had in common, like these necklaces got to go all throughout the series. I always wore bracelets um, just because I love when people like give me something. I don't know. It's like a tangible object and it like reminds me of them so I really liked it and I showed up the first time with like all these bracelets and they just kind of made that part of the character which was really cool I loved that that they were your bracelets and they were like and that she wore them that's yes. very cool very personal yeah 
yeah it was kind of like, cool so it then added this like personal touch to drama girl where i felt like i got to really bring her to life slightly like what josh is saying yeah um i don't necessarily do makeup tutorials and stuff on my own but like there were pieces of me that then seeped in i would give someone a hundred dollars that they really needed it like in my heart would string Nice. Okay, similarly they were my glasses originally the first yeah. time i got hired the, the glass and my hair did stick up spiky like that, you know, when I went into the audition to audition uh -huh. for the role, um, you know, and then I broke the glasses, my own glasses, and then they replaced them with look alike, similar, exact same glasses. That's pretty good. Yeah. So that was similar about me. And Julian, how about yourself? Is there any similarities between sound guy and, and yourself? Um, yeah, we're both tall. Um, <laughs> no, I did. Uh, I think, you know, I did some audio production uh, classes and in, in, like when I was trying out college and, you know, seeing what what I was going to do when I first moved out here, I wasn't really sure if acting was ever going to work out. So I was totally just I'm going to go to SFCC and see what I can, you know, what kind of credits I can take and what kind of classes I could take. And um, I ended up taking an audio production class and really got into audio production and, and sound mixing. So, um, you know, I record my own music and, and kind of, you know, mix it and have my own, you know, world with music and sound. And, you know, it's something that kind of became a much bigger element in my life after I got, you know, the role, of course, and I didn't really think about sound later, but became fascinated with Foley um, early on in, in film when I, when I was first one before I even got the role. So I was really interested in Foley too. So I guess there were some elements that I knew about, about film and sound that I brought to the character, but I, I really, yeah, I didn't know jack shit at that time. Well, look at your rig tonight. I mean, right there alone, you know, you've got the whole, yeah, the whole thing going on. So that's true. I mean, that's it's true. true. It's true. Uh, I, mean, I, I got a water bottle. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is nice. You know, I, I, I bought these two mics and decided to do the similar thing that, uh, you know, uh, Eric's doing is making a podcast. So great. I definitely invested in a little bit of it. Good for you. Good for you. Julian, when yeah. are you going to have Haley and me on your podcast? Yeah, come soon. on. Soon. Very, very, very soon. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. I've been hey, anxiously waiting by my phone. No. <laughs> oh yeah, I have. Oh, you know, I'm I'm doing this thing at the end. I'm I'm honoring the actor's studio where I'm uh, I'm asking the people questions, where I'll ask the ten questions. That, oh, uh, I won't I won't in. participate in that part of it. Why won't you participate in it? Come on. No, it's just silly. I mean, not to disparage. I just would feel silly doing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if you don't want to do it, I won't I won't push you to do it. But I mean, make sure maybe you I'll give still I'll give joke answers. You could do that. Yeah, that's what I like to. to do. I like to say I'm not doing that, and then I do it and have fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could do that. You could do that. Whatever you want. Uh -uh, do. Don't want to do it. Well, okay, let's try it. Actually, it's kind of fun <laughs> now that I'm doing it. Let's ask me another one. Well, I mean, I was just a big fan of the actor studio, and I loved James. It was a Lipton. great show. I miss Lipton, James. Lipton. I loved that show. I would watch it and think this is. I would take Seriously. notes. Exactly. Yeah. Here. Well, Julie, yeah. make sure you share some of the uh, details with us on this when you're, it hasn't launched yet, your podcast, or has not it? Not yet, not yet. It's okay. all in pre-production still. So, so please so do. I'll be happy to share with yeah. our, 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 obviously you with you can share with the Gillifers family as well too, but I'll be happy to Absolutely. help in any way I can too. Absolutely. Well, the podcast will be called Somewhere Southwest Podcast. So I love that. Guys, Very catchy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I'm excited about it. Oh, who do we got there, Josh? This is Bobby. Bobby came <laughs> hi, up to Bobby. say hi. Hello. <laughs> Staring at his adorable face when you were like petting him and his eyes. Were I know. Back. And your hair was back and you had long so hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Adorable. Bobby came up to say hi. Hello. Oh, yeah, this, hi, is Bobby. Bo this is Bobby and I from 2014. There you go. Here, <laughs> here we are today. Awesome. Yay, look at that. Thank you for making an appearance oh. on Gilliverse. And Thanks speaking of which, guys, this has been great. This has been fantastic. The band's back oh, together. Yes. Uh, extreme pleasure julian and josh nice to have you back Haley, it's very nice to have you for your first time thank here you. as well too and thank as we've told a lot of the viewers uh, better call saul may have ended last week uh but we're going to keep this thing going well into 2023 there's still lots to talk about we'll probably be covering uh, vince's next projects as well too so 
lots oh. to talk about and lots to reminisce. And we do need a support system here, I think, as well, too. So we'll keep the uh, the love going. Next week, we may have possibly a, a special guest host. I'm not sure if he's going to be joining me. Pete Peppers from Pete Peppers Channel might be joining well, I me. I like Pete Peppers. He yeah. has some good, thoughtful videos. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, he sent me a lot of people over here, a lot of viewers watching Tender because of Pete. So I thank him very much. Uh, whether he's here or not, uh, the invitation is open. Um, but we have uh, Pat Healy on the show, uh, Jeff Cab Driver. Love Pat Healy. Uh, you know, yes. Pat Healy is one of my best friends. Is he? Total coincidence. And Pat no Healy, is total a coincidence. coincidence. Total coincidence that we both were on the show. And I don't know if Pat's annoyed at me bragging about this, but Pat and I were in a sketch comedy group in 2004 okay. together. And we performed in a group, uh, yeah, in the basement of a Ramada Inn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ramada Very cool. Ramada. Yeah. I, re I really like so his you work. You want to have Pat and I on sometime too? I'd love we'll to. Have, we'll yuck it hey, up. listen, the oh, invitation yeah, is one open. Of the best. Very talented and uh, have the challenge of, you know, uh, replacing an actor who was unavailable. And I did know. Amazing. One of the first did recast in Gilliver's history, you know. Well, and okay. Tom Schnauz and I got into it on Twitter where I said, well, on the Fifi episode, the, an actor got sick. And right. They did film some with him. And Tom was like, doesn't count. That actor wasn't established. And I was like, yeah. well, but I think they did use the back of his head. Yeah. And Ray even had <laughs> Ray said something count. about that, too. Is there, I guess there was a, a character that was playing Ray possibly in a distant scene or something. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure what that was all about. But yeah, uh, like a, a, a stand in. Stand in yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, right. exactly. But listen, no, the invitation is open to all three of you anytime. Anytime you have something you want to promote, you want to talk about, if a book or a, a signing or this or that, reach out to me. I'm happy to have you on the show. Even if it's a special edition, I'm happy to have you. Welcome invitation here on, on the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. So Eric. fun to be here. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. been a blast. And good yeah, to see seriously. all of you guys again. Great to see you, you two guys. guys. It's so wonderful <laughs> to have you together, for sure. Don't go away. We're going to say goodbye to you off the air. But everyone, we hope you have a safe and fun weekend. And we encourage you to drop back again next Friday, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Pete Peppers, possibly, and uh, Pat Healy. We look forward to that. And we'll be making more announcements on all of our socials when we have other guests. I want to say a big thank you to Karina as well, to our executive producer. Thank you, Karina. Our, her, her team as Thank well you, too Karina. Jen, Renata and Eamon and everyone that's watching tonight if you're new here to the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button down below and we will work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as we did to get you and everyone we will see you again next week right here on Inside the Gilverse until next time cheers Thanks again for tuning into Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.